What's going on guys, Amazing Watch here back with another video. Today we're going to be going over the Hell Difficulty Crimson Demon coming to the global version of the game. So let's get into it. Alright, so for the Crimson Demon, he's going to be the attribute HP, so he's going to be he's going to be green type, he's going to be weak to the demon race, he's going to be strong against the goddess race, and immune to CC. So you can't petrify or freeze him. So for the characters for the Crimson Demon, it's actually a lot easier than the other two demons. Um, even though the Crimson Demon is the hardest one, um, technically, um, just because we have so many busted red characters in the game, it actually is the easiest fight. So the first character we're going to be going over is going to be Red Gother. Red Gother is needed for this fight, guaranteed. Um, if you don't have a Red Gother on either team, you're going to probably lose. Um, I'm just going to be straight up. Red Gother is needed for C Hell Crimson Demon because you need the rank up right here. The reason why Gother is so good in the Crimson Demon is because he has this rank up right here, which increases skill ranks, which on rank 2 increases skill ranks of all allies, which you want to use the rank 2, or the rank 3, which increases skill ranks of all allies and increases basic stats by 20% for 3 turns. Um, R Red Gother is just a very good character for demons in general. Um, Red Gother is a staple unit for all extreme demons, right? For all three of them, even the gray and the red. Um, having Gother in Crimson is a, is a luxury. Um, it makes it so Crimson Demon is very easy when you start ranking up your entire team cards, right? Um, another thing to note is Gother's passive increases all allies attack by 10% at the start of the next turn if the hero doesn't take damage. So if you actually one shot the Crimson Demon each phase, then you're going to be stacking up that Gother passive while you're doing it right. Very good for the fight. Another thing to note is Gother's ultimate with the King Link inflicts damage equal to 400% of attack on all enemies and depletes 5 ultimate move gauge orbs. And it actually does deplete the ultimate move gauge orbs from the Crimson Demon which is very useful. Um, this ultimate can scale up to 600% at 6 out of 6 with the King Link so very good. Yeah all around Gother is going to be your main um, support for the fight. We're going to be going over the next support character for the fight which is going to be the Red Arthur. Red Arthur is going to be here because he actually gives you the increased basic stats buff for your entire team. So on his level 3, he's going to remove debuffs of all allies, increase basic stats by 30%, and grant debuff immunity for 3 turns. This is really important because once you start chaining the Gother rank ups, um, you're going to want to use um, at least one Arthur on either of your teams to get this buff right here, right? Um, it's very important for getting the buff off. And then for his ultimate right here, he actually inflicts sever damage equal to 560% of attack on one enemy, and that can scale to 840%. Um, sever is times 2 crit chance. His first skill is useless because the Crimson Demon doesn't. Um, you can't actually disable his recovery skills. You can only disable his recovery with the infect skill, right? This is dis disabling recovery um, skills, not the infect. So Arthur's first card is only here for a little bit extra damage, right? Um, you're mainly using him for this card right here. Arthur's passive is also really good if you're going to be using Red Escanor on the team because it increases human allies HP related stats by 15%, which is really good. So the next character we're going to be going over is going to be Red Escanor. And Red Escanor is going to be really good for this fight because of his Amplify card here um, in conjunction with Red Gother and Red Arthur. So for Escanor's first skill, he's going to inflict Amplify damage equal to 450% of attack on one enemy. And Amplify is going to be damage dealt 30% per active buff on the on self. So that's going to increase Escanor's damage by a ton when you get Arthur's basic stats buff right here. Um, and it's going to give you, Arthur's going to give you four buffs because you're getting the each basic style, which can be attack, defense, and HP. And then you're going to be getting the debuff immunity, which also counts as a buff. Escanor himself, actually with his passive, applies an effect on the hero, which increases HP related stats by 50% at the start of the battle for three turns. So you can actually stack this Hellfire passive with... Um, all the Arthur buffs here to have about five buffs on Escanor, so his Amplify card is going to be doing insane damage. For his second skill, he's going to inflict damage equal to 250% of attack on all enemies and deplete three ultimate move gauge orbs. So very important to have this card just to deplete the Crimson Demon ult. And his ultimate is very good also, which inflicts damage equal to 960% of attack on one enemy. And it can be linked with Merlin to do the damage. Um, at 6 out of 6, he's going to be doing 1,440% damage, right, with the Merlin link. The next character we're going to be going over is going to be the main DPS for the fight. Escanor is actually going to be a secondary DPS for the fight, but the main DPS for the fight is going to be the Red Derriere. And the reason for Red Derriere being the main DPS is because the Crimson Demon is actually weak to demon characters, and because Derriere is a demon character, she actually gets bonus damage in the fight. For her first skill, she's going to inflict damage equal to 600% of attack on one enemy. It's just straight raw damage at 600% of attack. Um, this card actually has the highest multiplier for damage in the game. Um, 
um, compared to other uh, cards, right? Um, it is the highest damaging card in the game, right? For Derriere, second skill, she's going to increase basic stats by 50% for three turns and gain evasion for one turn, which is a very good card, right? You're going to be able to evade the Crimson Demon attacks and get the basic stat increase. And this is going to be in conjunction with her ultimate where she inflicts amplified damage equal to 630% of attack on one enemy. And as you guys know from Red Escanor, amplified damage is 30% of damage dealt increase per active buff on the self. So very good to have Red Derriere with all the buffs. And her passive is also going to be in conjunction with her ultimate. Increases attack by 10% when the hero uses skills. The effect is removed when the skill is not used. And each attack buff right here is a buff on Derriere herself. So that's going to stack with her Amplify. And you can get up to 10 buffs with Derriere here. So you're going to be doing um, 10 times the 30% on the Amplify, which is pretty insane, right, for damage. Derriere is going to be the main DPS for the fight. If you don't have Derriere, you can use Red Escanor. The next character we're going to be going over used to be the optimal unit for the fight, but because Red Derriere and Red Escanor came out, he actually has been overshadowed a little bit. So the next character we're going to be going over is the Red Demon Meliodas. It's crazy because Red Demon Meliodas was actually made for the Crimson Demon fight, just like how um, Green King and Blue Bond were made for their respective raids. But the thing is with Red Demon Meliodas is that he is overshadowed by Derriere because Derriere just outputs um, more raw damage, right? Um, but Red Demon Meliodas still is a very good character because he is a demon race and he does more damage on the Crimson Demon. So let's go over his kit. For his first skill, he's going to inflict damage equal to 450% of attack on one enemy and applies three Ignite effects for five turns. You can actually apply Ignite debuffs on the Crimson Demon, so this is a very useful skill. For his second skill, he's going to inflict damage equal to 630% of attack on one enemy and infects for two turns. So infect is actually different from the recovery disable because infect actually restricts recovery related stacks from from actually working so you can't life steal you can't um naturally heal every turn right um it's very good to block healing from the crimson demon for his ultimate he's going to inflict weak point damage equal to 440 percent of attack on one enemy when linked with merlin um the multiplier can actually scale up to 660% of attack at 6 out of 6. For his passive, he's going to increase crit chance by 50% when an ally dies. So if any of your allies die in the Crimson Demon, Meliodas is going to be at a 100% crit chance base, which is pretty insane. Um, he's going to be critting a ton on the Crimson Demon. For subunits you can use in the fight, you can use the Red Jericho in the sub slot for the 10% attack related stats increase. You can also use... The red Twigo in the sub, he gives 30% HP to the strength attribute characters. That's going to be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.